Realestate2000.com Real Estate Podcast. My name is Chuck Ham, and today Doug Partello is joining us and he is a homeless advocate. Doug, welcome. Thank you. Um, I want to talk today about what you do. So um, first, what does it mean to you to be a homeless advocate? What are you doing as a homeless advocate? What it means for me is trying to do the things as a private citizen that advance the cause of those that are unsheltered. For my main focus has been on just basic human needs. Folks need water. They need access to toilets. They need trash removal and laundry. You know, just the very fundamental basic needs of a human being. And I also feel that Part of my mission is just to connect with people and understand their perspective better and better understand uh, what their story is and how they got to where they are. Let's talk about Lloyd. So when I met Lloyd, he was in an encampment in Oxnard, uh, unbeknownst to those uh, in the county that have gone on outreach to that because he's somewhat isolated. So he's all by himself. I asked the question of one of the uh, campers, uh, is there anyone I hadn't met? And they took, he took me to Lloyd. So your story began with the death of your father? Yes. And you were about 21 at that time? Yeah, 21. And you guys were living in a mobile home park? Yes. And then once he passed on, uh, you had a difficulty in making the rent. Yes. And then you got sick yourself, right? Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about that? I had uh, a kidney removed and everything and and I was sick and, and my lungs and everything just everything just fell apart about five ten years later I was then I ended up on the street so your situation was the death of a significant family member and then you had some rather serious health problems yes uh-huh so you were able to maintain yourself in that trailer for what, four or five years? Yeah. And then with your health problems, and then the, uh, you weren't getting enough money coming in. And what were you living on at that point uh, for your monthly income? Less than 700 a month. Okay, was that government assistance? That's or? SSI and okay. Social Security. Okay, so you qualified for Social Security. Uh, so you had a disability that qualified you. Yes. But it was a fairly low amount to try to sustain yourself right. as a housed person. My point of contact with these folks is try to get them to go and access services if they desired. And for Lloyd, I was very concerned about his physical condition and his living condition because his camp was really awful. So I just had a very deep concern for this person that he needed uh, medical attention and he had been without his medication. So what I did for Lloyd is I uh, got him to accept my help and get in my car and I took him to the one stop which is the county mobile uh, outreaches and so we went there uh, tried to get him connected to services but I really needed to get Lloyd to an urgent care so I took him to urgent care I got him uh, breathing treatments for him got him reconnected with a primary care physician with a follow-up visit and so that could stabilize his breathing and get him his prescriptions that he needed, which he hadn't had for three months, but also identify what his needs were. It's my understanding when I met you just recently that you really had no uh, documents like a California ID, yeah. a birth certificate. Yeah. You do have Medicare and Medi-Cal, but you didn't have those cards. And then you have a lot of health issues. Yeah. So how was it accessing your health care because uh, I understand you need medications like for your breathing. Yeah. Uh, so how, what were some of the barriers to you to maintain contact with the healthcare system? Uh, walking. Okay. Getting to getting around to the places. Okay. So you had to walk, find a bus, get there. So when I met you, you had actually been without your medication. Yeah for about three months, which is extremely difficult because these are like daily medications right. that are necessary just to sustain your breathing, right? Yeah. So when I found you, you were having quite a bit of trouble with your breathing. I couldn't get down to uh, my doctor. I was 
I was about ready to call uh, 911 and have an ambulance to take me to the hospitals and I could get my medicine again. Right. What is it you're doing that you think the public can also do to help the homeless? I think the main thing that the general public can do is educate themselves. Try to work with what's going on locally and find out what you can connect with and be satisfied that they're doing the type of work that you agree with and you think this is where I need to pour my energies, whether that's material donations, financial donations, just giving time as a volunteer, you know, serving food, you know, handing out clothing, whatever, you know, satisfies your need to want to be a part of a solution. But I think that, you know, going on your own and transporting people, you, you've got to feel safe, right? And so that's the first thing. So a lot of people wouldn't feel comfortable doing what I do. So that works for me, you know, I'm willing to do these things because um, I feel it's my calling to do that. Can you tell um, our audience what Project Room Key is because Lloyd is benefiting from that right now? Yeah, Project Room Key is a program that provides emergency shelter, uh, federally funded. It's part of the COVID uh, CARES money that's uh, being used to meet emergent needs of people that are unsheltered now that place them in an emergency shelter and basically it's local motels uh, that they're paying the owners and operators of these motels to keep homeless people in the motel rooms uh, roughly a hundred dollars a night uh, so they are working with the county agencies and other local agencies with the cities and the counties as the administrators of the program but it comes from federal and state funding and that is just an emergency shelter uh, in motel rooms lo and lo by local owners with agreements with local owners and our friend Lloyd he um, benefited quite a bit from this because of the <laughs> the rain that we just had mm -hmm. He would be probably hospitalized uh, if he made it that far. Um, the problem with Lloyd is he has such severe breathing uh, problems uh, that the weather uh, affects him greatly. So when it's cold, when it's rainy, that affects his breathing. So when I found him, it was sunny, it wasn't during that rainy period, and he was already in bad shape. So the rain and the cold weather that we've been experiencing would exacerbate his breathing so I would guess that he would probably be in intensive care. I don't think there was any chance that Lloyd was going to find Project Room Key without you Doug. No and that is just part of the problem of sometimes when these outreach team goes um, they just don't ask the right questions sometimes. So I had been going out there for about a month's time and getting to know pretty much everybody out there. There are about 35 people out there. So one gentleman I was speaking with, I just asked him this one question. I said, is there anybody out here that I've yet to meet? And he said, oh yeah, it's Lloyd, the old timer. He's way in the back. Now keep in mind that for some time, Ventura County has a backpack medicine outreach that goes out to homeless encampments. And so they go there weekly. And so they didn't even know Lloyd exists. You had no contact with them at all. No. So just by asking that one simple question, I was able to make a contact with Lloyd and then understand better what his circumstance was. And then I began a process to getting him reconnected to services and hopefully in the future, housing. We are here today, it's January 18th, 2023, in the city of Ventura at the Vagabond Inn. We're just continuing our story of Lloyd, who's been an unsheltered person for 22 years. So when we last left off with Lloyd, he was just getting reconnected to uh, social services and healthcare services. And so now we just wanted to follow the story along and kind of see where Lloyd's at since our last uh, video. He's at the Vagabond Inn through the whole person care of Ventura County. It's a, a government agency program that assists people with their health care, but they also help people find housing, whether it be emergency temporary shelter, transitional housing, and hopefully in the end would be permanent housing. So Lloyd was accepted into that program. 
and they were able to uh, get him temporary emergency shelter at the motel. It's a project called Project Room Key. Hopefully the future be be brighter than it is now, then, because it, it, if we, if there's like over 200 people in this uh, motel area, and when the program goes over, go ended, there'd be 200 people out on the street. And so the, and the, probably, who knows where I'd be when this program's ended. What's next for Lloyd? I think it's uncertain. Um, there's a question of the continuing uh, funding for Project Room Key. So even his emergency shelter in the motel room is in question right now. So that's an uncertainty. We know that the process to get permanent housing that's subsidized by the federal government, whether that be emergency housing voucher or HUD funding for Section 8 or some program for seniors or less fortunate folks to get into a program to receive subsidized housing is a lengthy wait process. So we really don't know what Lloyd's even immediate future at the end of this month holds. So he could very well be back out on the street. In the time that he's been housed, uh, his encampment is completely gone. So that's been raided. There's nothing left there. He has no tent. He has no solar panels. He has nothing. So he's basically starting over if he is to be put back out on the street. Uh, how's it going with having a homeless advocate by your side and helping you out? It's been great. Help. It's, he's helpful. Uh, I'm only one, but just imagine if he had uh, 30 of us or even 10, he'd probably, probably go nuts at, at the ending. <laughs> you know what? That, that is so true. Because if you look at these caseworkers that work for the county, their caseload is 30 plus. And just to make a point of contact is a real challenge for them because uh, just finding their clients, because they move around. I think the simplest act that you can do that you feel safe but it really makes a difference is just have eye contact you know smile or recognize that person wave to the person uh, just make a connection that they're not invisible they're an actual human being that exists and by you recognizing them in a positive way with a smile or a wave you'd be surprised how much of an impact that will have on them because it's oftentimes a matter of them getting their own dignity restored and when they're invisible to everybody we see them every day but yet they remain invisible in that way so if we just make a human connection with eye contact maybe a wave or a smile that can make a tremendous difference for them psychologically thanks for listening